The ruling All Progressive Congress has blamed the People's Democratic Party for impoverishing 133 million Nigerians. And ahead of the 2023 general elections in Delta State, Sheriff Obovevori has extended an olive branch to Messrs. Edebove as Supreme Court reaffirms his candidacy. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anoko. The ruling All Progressive Congress, APC, has exonerated the administration of President Muhammad Buhari, uh, retired, of course, General, uh, the, for the poverty level of over 133 million Nigerians. Now, early this month, uh, the National Bureau of Statistics disclosed that about 133 million people, which represented about 63% of Nigerians, were multidimensionally poor. The Bureau further indicated that 65% of the impoverished people live in the north, while the remaining 35% are represented in the south. However, the APC has defended the Buhari's uh, administration, saying it had no case to answer when it came to the impoverished state of the average Nigerian. Joining us to discuss this is Ilemona Onoja. He is the head of media department, PDP Presidential Campaign Council, and also joining us later on the show, Okewe Sharafa. He's a legal practitioner and a member of the APC here in Lagos State. Uh, thank you very much, Ilemona, for joining us. Thank you very much for having me, Marianne. Just a very quick correction. I am the head of the new media department, not the media department. New in media. Great, great. Uh, let's start by, I was hoping that we would have the uh, APC member join us quickly so they could explain to us um, what they meant by um, the PDP being responsible. But then this is an allegation that has been leveled against the People's Democratic Party here. Um, and this is a few months just to the close of the Buhari administration before we go into the elections and, of course, a new president emerges. Now, the Buhari administration is exonerating itself from what the Bureau of Statistics has come out with. And um, this impoverishment we're talking about is, uh, we're, we're talking about 63% of Nigerians here. Um, let's go back to the PDP administration because, of course, the APC makes reference to the fact that you have held on to power for at least 18 years plus, and now they've only had a few years in government. Uh, but where do you think that the APC is coming from with this issue of impoverishment and, and with what the Bureau of Statistics is saying? Where does the PDP stand on this matter? It is, okay. What you're seeing is what you're seeing is ongoing evidence live streamed to millions of Nigerians about the refusal of the All Progressives Congress to take responsibility for its maladministration, for take responsibility for its failure of governance, to take responsibility for the wicked, insensitive, and absolutely abominable sort of leadership and rule that it has given to our country over the course of the last seven years. It is very easy to distill these issues. There were not 133 million or, or multidimensionally poor Nigerians in 2015 when the APC was sworn into office. In fact, in 20. 18, 2019, there were 40.1% 40 of Nigerians were poor. After four years of APC, APC's rule, that number was significantly lower in 2015. This that we have here, if we take into consideration certain things, like the fact that unemployment stood at 9%, in 2015, when the APC was sworn into power, youth unemployment was way significantly less than its current 52 percent. Uh, we did not um, inflation stood at the single digit of nine percent when APC came into power. All these indices have changed, 
at the moment, if, I, um, if I'm correct, APC, um, inflation stands at maybe 21, 22%. We have insecurity on record levels. We have unemployment on record levels. We have record levels of crime and criminality. It's a no brain now. But because the APC does not have a track record to run, because the APC does not have a verifiable record of delivery of service and good governance to the Nigerian people, it has resorted to the only thing that it believes is possible, to look into our faces and to tell us bold, faith, bold bare-faced lies and to misrepresent the fact and to try to pull the wool over our eyes in the hope that Nigerians won't be discerning people and that they wouldn't study the numbers to know what the truth is. But that's not the case. It is our work in the PDP to help Nigerians remember. We must remember that this country, this government has taken away our jobs. We must remember that this government has taken away our means of livelihood. We must remember that this government has looked away as we are terrorized by brigands and terrorists. We must remember that this government has watched haplessly as our farms are unproductive, as our schools are closed, as our healthcare centers simply cannot give us any health care. We must remember. We must remember that this government has supervised never before seen levels of corruption. We must remember that this government has supervised never before seen levels of incompetence. We must remember these things. And then we must punish it at the polls next year when we send this heartless, mindless, insensitive government back to the doldrums from whence it came and we elect a government and elect a government okay. that will be sensitive to the yearnings and aspirations of the Nigerian people. All right, joining us now is, of course, um, Mr. Okeweye Sharafa. He's a legal practitioner and also a member of the APC. Mr. Okeweye, you, if you have um, been listening, you would hear what... Um, Mr. Nodja has been saying, he's saying that your party um, is bold-faced lying to Nigerians about your claim that the PDP has impoverished 133 million Nigerians. Now, let's start by looking at the promises that the, the president, Muhammad Buhari, and his, of course, the APC made to Nigerians, three core areas where the campaign areas talking about fighting corruption putting an end to insecurity and of course um, making sure that there is some form of employment uh, but uh, can we say that the government has done well in those areas and where is the APC coming from with this allegation against the PDP please help us understand well Nigerians must realize that at the time this government took over in 2015, Nigeria was in comatose. Security architecture was already not working. Our economy was in shambles. A lot of things were wrong with our system. But in 2014, the thinking of this leadership was that Nigeria economic or Nigeria state was not terrible or was not bad. But the moment we took over mantle of leadership, we discovered that the problem was more serious than we thought. And which means Nigerian structure was a very stable one, which requires holistic restructuring, holistic approach to various challenges that were bedeviling our nation. I won't equally forget that between 2016 and 2021, the entire world faced a lot of economic challenges. That period, the price of oil uh, was at the lowest ebb. Ditto for COVID-19, that ravaged the whole world between 2019 and 2022, as well as a global economic recession, which was actually having a parity effect on our um, Nigerian states. And these are the challenges Buhari has inherited. And we should give that government credit for being able to ensure 
that Nigeria remains a nation to be reckoned with. These are the challenges that we are facing. Now, let's now address issue specifically. Before 2015, Boko Haram insurgency had taken over better parts of Northeast. In fact, they were in charge of most states in the Northern East. And they were even flying their flag in most local government and state of the Northeast. But when this government came on board, they were able to reclaim those states and local governments. Today, no local government, no community, no state is under the, 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 the rule of Boko Haram insurgency. Meaning that in the area of security, this current government has been able to surpass the achievement or records of the previous administration. In terms of economy, during the previous administration, Nigeria enjoyed all boom. That was when we had the highest price for oil in the whole world, which the previous government could not show anything as uh, the, 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 the resultant effects of that oil boom. This government has only enjoyed the lowest price of oil. Despite like that, the government has been able to manage our nation states to this level. I'd like to and quick... if you look at the infrastructure. Okay. Hello? Go ahead, go ahead. I'll just let you land, then I'll ask my question. Now, if you look at the infrastructure, this government has been able to put in place compared what PDP government put in place in the last 16 years, Nigerians should give kudos to this government for okay. performing wonders. That's why the challenges economically, security-wise, and politically that the government had witnessed, the government was able to ensure that the lives of Nigerians are touched. No okay. doubt we are having serious economic challenge. Which is not peculiar to okay. Nigeria. All right, Mr. Shafa, let me let, let me let me bring you let me bring you back. Now you talked about okay. the government performing wonders. I really want to understand where these wonders have taken place. Um, because I, I just only picked the three core areas which with which the president had campaigned on. And then of course campaigned again, um, that he we give him another opportunity at this office so that he could better upon the things that he could not do. I ask you again, very succinctly, how well do you think that the president has done in those three core areas? I'd like to quickly just run through a few things that the president and this administration has failed to do. Then I'll let um, Mr. Nodja come in. Um, the president had promised Nigerians that he was going to ban, put a ban on officials for going abroad for medical treatment. He failed because, num number one, the president is the very person that leads that charge. Uh, secondly, the, the president had said that um, he was going to deal with the issue of public declaration of assets and liabilities failed. Um, he promised that he was going to create 3 million jobs per year. He failed woefully. Um, the revival of Ajao Kuta Steel Company, the president has also failed. Um, he also promised that he was going to create a social welfare program uh, where a minimum of 5,000 will be paid to 25 million poorest of vulnerable citizens. Where did the money go? Because we keep hearing that those monies were paid. To whom? He failed. Again, the president promised that he was going to generate and transmit and distribute at least 20,000 megawatts of electricity within four years and, of course, um, increase it to 50,000 megawatts with a view of achieving 24-7, you know, light, uninterrupted power supply within 10 years. Again, Mr. President has failed. I have a long list. So, please, what wonders did the Buhari administration perform? Again, Mr. President, I have a long list. So, please. Mr. Shaf, are you there? Much. Thank you very much. Now, you see, I said earlier, I said in 2014, when we were campaigning, we thought Nigerian problems were not enormous. Based on the picture we were given by the then PDP government, by the time we took over, 
we discovered that Nigerian problem was was so entrenched that it will require a very serious and meticulous attempt to bring Nigeria back from uh, uh, the, the, the trend of going into a sort of serious economic recession. Mm -hmm. Now, you are correct by saying uh, in certain areas, the current government was unable to actually meet up the aspiration of Nigerians. But I finally said that we mustn't forget that despite the positive of funds, this government was able to keep Nigeria working, to keep Nigeria running. All it's right. not easy. All right, I'm going to I bring... mentioned... I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. You. I'm sorry, I just want you oh. to put a pin there. Just put a pin there. Let me bring back Ilemona. Ilemona, you listened to Mr. Sharafa, and he's, he's, he's com constantly said that there's been challenges economic-wise, worldwide. Um, we've had COVID-19 to deal with. And, of course, um, the government had to deal with also the bench, oil benchmark, you know, across the uh, world. And, of course, the paucity of funds under this administration. Hence, why the presidency has not been able to cover all of its promises. But we go back to the allegations that the PDP... Uh, is at the core of the problems that the average Nigerian is facing today, even though the president at some point had seen that th there were problems and still canvassed or campaigned to be president to ch give us change. They're saying that they've tried their best, even though there's been a lot of roadblocks and challenges. I'd like to hear from you. If it wasn't so sad, Mr. Sharafa's presentation would have been funny. The only reason why I'm not bursting out in unrestrained and hilarious, in all-out laughter, is because it, it is really sad. It is sad to look at Nigerians and try to tell these sorts of lies. At the, at the commencement of President Muhammad Buhari's administration, no, no local governments or states were annexed by Boko Haram. The military in tandem with um, mercenaries recruited from abroad, had cleared Boko Haram by a considerable amount, which was the only reason why we were able to have the 2015 elections in the first place. It is also a lie to come and look at us and tell us that there are no stem, there are no swords of land that are in, under Boko Haram control or under terrorist control. In Katsina, the home state of President Muhammad Buhari, people have to pay taxes to terrorists who are called bandits in order to be able to access their farms. In Niger State, another APC-controlled state, people have to pay taxes to terrorists to be able to access their homes and their farms. Indeed, the governor of Kaduna State, Nasir El Rufai, recently held an interview where he said that Terrorists are in control of large parts of Kaduna State to the point where he doesn't believe elections can hold in those areas and that people have to pay taxes to terrorists to access their homes and their farms. For anybody to come and tell us that lie, that there isn't this level of insecurity in our, um, in, um, in our country, my goodness. This noise about um, oil prices... The Buhari administration has never had to deal with oil prices as low at points as the Obasanjo administration had to deal with. Yet, the Obasanjo administration boasted in its first four years economic growth of 5.3%, of 5%, 5.3%, 15.3%, and then 7.4% 7 in its first four years. Nothing, the APC-led federal government is not able to give us anywhere near those sort of growth numbers. Instead, we've come off the back But then there's the argument, there's the, there's the argument, down. there's the argument from Mr. Sharafa that, look, you were in power at the peak of the oil boom. You had great opportunities, like the Paris Club refund. I will quickly, I will, I will quickly correct certain things. We're in the middle of an oil boom, yet we're making losses. Well, this is the first time in our national history that we haven't made the benefit from an oil boom. Who is in power? The APC. 
This is the first time. I also tell you something. There were periods during President Obasanjo's tenure with Vice President Alaji Atiku Abaka in office as chairman of the National Economic Council, where oil sold for as low as $20 a barrel. The lowest, at a point, it sold for as low as $9 a barrel. The lowest the APC has had over around $35, $38 a barrel. A clear margin over the lowest points of the PDP. Yet, the PDP never led us into a recession. Yet, the PDP never led us to this sort of multi-dimensional poverty. Yet, the PDP didn't bring this level of sorrow, tears, and blood to our homes and our farms. Mr. Sharafa obviously isn't in tune with his, his, with his history. If he was, he wouldn't be saying some of the things that he's saying on this interview. At least not to me. Mr. Sharafa, would you like to come in, please? Mr. Shafa, can you hear me? My, my comment is just this. We must agree fundamentally that PDP was in power for the first 16 years of our democratic uh, process. And when opposition party then took over in 2015, I said it earlier, we never knew that the problem was as serious as this. And the PDP government then was actually covering a lot of things from the public. They were only trying to do make-believe governance. But the current president of Nigeria is a type that doesn't believe in deceiving people. Now, uh, in terms of the uh, oil price, it's an international uh, fact that during the PDP administration, they enjoyed oil boom for the better part of their administration, which is not the case in the current government. Uh, the only time we had opportunity of having selling oil higher is one, and which is this year. Due to the fact that the whole world was battling with a lot of economic challenges, recession, COVID-19, international war, conflict here and there, affecting all producing nations. And in the area of security, this government has tried a lot. During the PDP administration, we were hearing how insurgents were taking over uh, town communities and states without any resistance from the security authorities. But that is not the case now. They are being repelled. Okay. We are only having pockets. So, so that's Boko Haram, Mr. Sharafa. They've been repelled, but then we have to deal with bandits. We have to deal with kidnappers. Nigerians are unable to travel safely on certain highways. It's even come very close to home here in Lagos. It, the kidnappings have gotten close to Lagos. So when you say that, oh, Boko Haram has been repelled to the fringes, what about the other parts of this hydra-headed monster that's, that we have to deal with? Again, I'm most curious because you keep talking about the fact that, oh, we've had wars, you know, international wars affecting us. This is when Nigeria should be cashing out. And just like Ilemona said, I'm wondering, the oil um, vessel that was found or traced to, to the sea, and of course the one that was destroyed by um, the army, which no investigation has been done, how much money do you think we've lost? And what is the presidency saying or has said about that issue? Has it not gone cold? Mr. Sharafa. Now, this is my thing. Now, when the insurgency has been repaired outside the country, well, they, they, they regrouped and turned to themselves to a guerrilla sort of uh, attacker, a backing on kidnapping and what have you. And I tell you, our security apparatus are suddenly constituted and as inherited from the PDP led administration are not prepared for the kind of surprise attack the kidnappers, the insurgents are springing up. And that is why the current government is having a rethink. There's need for us to empower our security agencies 
We require technology to be able to quench commission of crime. But they have realized that Nigerian states, generally speaking, are porous. That's mm. a fact we must accept. So we're just realizing the problem after the almost, after almost seven years, we're just realizing that that this war needs to be taken to a technological dimension. You're saying that in all of the years that this government has been in power, you're just realizing at the eve of another election that you, this war needs to be taken to a technological dimension. Can we say that the APC has failed Nigerians in its entirety? Mr. Sharif, is it possible for you to turn off your TV? Because I think I'm getting a feedback. The kind of insurgency Nigeria is battling with it has an international dimension and international backing. We must take that. And it has been realized that our security agents are trying. But the, 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 the insurgents are, are actually striking in least expected places. Now, take for instance the attack on the train that was traveling. Between Karina and Abuja, the attack was done in the middle of the bush where it was least expected. But as a technology backup for our security agents, they were able to detect and fight this. Okay. But they, how, but they are talking about the current technology know how. And you know, technology is developing every day. All we are saying, of course, is this. The uh, criminal activities of the insurgents are just uh, graduating every day, which require technology um, apparatus to monitor okay. and nip in the bud okay. uh, commission of any crime. Okay. What I'm saying, of course, is that the insurgents, the militants, the kidnappers have not been doing this as before. And Nigerians are only interested, sorry, let's say this, few Nigerians are only interested in when the insurgents bandit strike, not when our military authorities or military men were able to overwhelm and destroy or okay. demobilize the okay. insurgents. Because we're, uh, because we're running out of time, I'm just going to let Ilemona come in here quickly because we have to go. Ilemona, he's saying, yeah, yeah, you, you've heard what, what he said, so I don't have to you, respond. What will, yeah. What you will see, it is obvious that Mr. Risharafa is reading from a prepared script, which is the reason why he's unable to respond to you or to I. And he just goes on recycling information that is false, that is misleading, and that is designed to pull the wool over the eyes of unsuspecting Nigerians. In the time between 2015 and 2022, the Nigerian security budget has increased by almost 200% in that time. What we have done, what we have seen, what we continue to see is a monumental failure to apply that budget appropriately to ensure that there is an improvement in the lives, security, welfare, and well-being of the ordinary Nigerian. Point one. Point two, we've come, we've seen Nigeria suffer two insurgents, um, we've seen Nigeria suffer two recessions under the Buhari administration. And he uses a global economic downturn as an excuse. But remember that the PDP-led federal government also supervised Nigeria at a time of a global recession in 2008 and 2009. We did not enter into a recession as a country. These excuses are simply that. They are excuses. Excuses we were always told are the nails to, that are used to build a house of failure. The APC has turned Nigeria under its administration to a house of failure. And these things are just excuses. When you come on the eve of another election to say that, oh, you didn't understand what the problems were. You didn't understand what the problems were and you campaigned for an election. 
you have enjoyed the benefits of being voted into office, the perks of office, and you cannot deliver for the Nigerian people. You didn't come, you didn't understand the problems, and you campaigned for re-election. You didn't understand the problems, and you are campaigning yet a third time. Why should we believe that you understand what you're doing now? Why should we believe that you understand what you're saying now? Why should we believe that in another four years you will not come back and tell us you didn't understand the problems? Can you please move away from the highway so that the people who understand the problems can be elected into office and can begin to implement the solutions? Can you do that? Alaji Atikwa Baka, the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, understands the problems that face Nigeria. Okay. That is why he has released a five-point agenda for unity to reunite our country, okay. to secure our people, to educate our people, to okay. improve our economy, and to restructure our country. It is when we implement this agenda that we will immediately see an improvement in the lives, right. lifestyle, welfare, and well-being of the average Nigerian. We have People to go. Who come and tell us that they are unprepared for office, deserve not to be voted into office. And okay. it represents a continuing insult we have to, go. to the sensibilities of the Nigerian people that anybody from the APC, which Mr. Sharafa has said was rightly unprepared for office, should come to us to ask for our votes to be reelected into office. Well, uh, I, I feel I feel I can feel the pain in your voice, uh, but unfortunately, that that's all the time we have, gentlemen. Eleven Alnaja is the head of New Media Department with the People's Democratic Party Presidential Campaign Council, and Okewe Sharafa is a legal practitioner and a member of the APC in Lagos. State. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Let's do this again sometime soon. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much. Well, we'll take a quick break. And when we return, we'll be looking at what's happening in the PDP in Delta State and who's extending an olive branch and who's receiving. Stay with us.